Okay, everybody, in this episode, I'm going to be covering Premiere's functionality with markers. I'm going to create a timeline here, and we're going to show you there's kind of two different ways that you can work with markers. And the simple shortcut, it's fairly easy, is just going to be M as in marker. And you will see marker shortcuts here in the source monitor, here in the program monitor, and here in the timeline. And markers can be added either to a, pretty much just to a timeline or to a clip. And that's really the only two uses of markers. So here in the timeline, we have a clip in the timeline. And say we want to add notes either to the timeline or to the clip. Well, first of all, let's show it in the source monitor. I'm going to load a clip into the source monitor. And just double click and load a clip into the source monitor here. And as I play through this here, one instance where markers might be used is if, if a director is going through dailies and wants to, and the director wants to leave notes for the editor. This is a good spot to do that. As you play through a clip and you find a very specific point, the director says, might want to cut right when this lady's face crosses the main action here. Once she's out, that's where the director for some reason wants to cut and leaves a, a message for the editor. You simply hover your mouse over this item here. Now this is just a clip in here. This is not in the timeline. So this is just going to add markers to the clip. And if I hit this little item right here, or, or just use the shortcut letter M, a marker has been added on that exact frame right there. Now you can add as many markers as you wish on here. You can't add marker upon marker, but you can add several markers down the line here, find different points and add markers there. And, and now if I wish to get rid of those markers here, I can just simply right click on those and we can go down and say clear selected marker. Or you can also right click up here and say clear all markers. Okay. But once we add a marker, let's show kind of a reason for adding, or, or let's show the extra functionality with the markers here. I'm going to get it right there, we'll pass that lady, hit M, and I want to leave, and I want to leave a note for the editors. I'm going to simply double click on this marker, and it will open up this little information box for that specific marker. It shows the time code where it's at, and we can say the name of this marker here is Lady Walk I. And now we can go down, so we've named that marker. Now we can go down and mention or explain in more detail what we want done here. Cut to medium shot of Neil immediately after the lady is out of the frame. And there is a specific note. Now we just hit OK. And also one other, a couple other things down here. With mark color down here, say we have very specific instructions on maybe dialogue or on action or some some specific type of marker that we've been adding here. And, if we're at, and, and you can go down and click on one of these colors and it will change the marker color to the specific color that you add right there. So if we click on blue and hit OK, the marker will change to blue. Say we do a set of markers for the assistant editor and a set of markers for the editor, then we can change colors and color code them. So now when the editor opens up this clip, you can simply go and double click on this. Actually, if you just hover over, it will show the name of the marker right there and the time code. You can double click on it. It will open it up and show you the notes associated with this marker. Premiere has also added some other items here, some other types of markers down here. You have a chapter marker. This is really helpful if you're exporting out a clip or if you're exporting out a DV, uh, something for DVD or Blu-ray. You can do your chapter markers within Premiere Pro, then export them out, and then you'll have these markers already added once you bring it into a software like Encore. And you can also do this to video clips and it'll add those markers when you import the, that video clip into Premiere, those markers will still be on the clip, will be permanently associated with that clip. Down here, they've added a couple things like web link. You can actually put a web link in here. So once you click on that, it will open up a web link that you can, if you're doing notes online, say the director is in a different state or across the country, the director can leave notes and link them to a web link or a blog that the editor can then click on and find those comments and be able to make the changes. Okay, the other place you can do markers is going to be in the timeline. Let me add a couple clips here in the timeline and say we've been doing some editing here. So we've got a few clips there. And now let's move Move through the timeline here and find a point that we want to do a marker here. Okay, let's say on the on the edit we're going to add kind of a similar marker here. Now one thing you've got to be aware of is uh, actually let's grab this clip first of all. Let's drag this down to the timeline. Notice here that we still have that marker on the clip right there, and that is actually on the clip. In the timeline, you can put markers in two different places. You can put markers on the clip or you can put them on the timeline. I'm going to move over here. If nothing is selected in the timeline, by the way, if a couple items are selected and you want to deselect, you can simply just click your mouse away from the clips. And and it will deselect those. Otherwise, you can also do use a shortcut. Keep in mind, Control A is like a select all. So Control A selects everything in the timeline. Shift almost oftentimes makes things flip flop or opposite. So we've got things selected. You can do Control Shift A will select not everything. So it's like the opposite. So it deselects. So there you go. Uh, so we've got everything deselected because if you do have something selected and you hit M, notice it adds a marker on the clip, not on the timeline. 
which is okay if that's what you're trying to do. But say we're trying to add a marker. Let's go to this previous clip here. Let's say we want to add a note about these guys kissing here as it gets closer here to them kissing. She leans in and goes to kiss. And the director doesn't actually want to see the kiss because this is actually a PG movie and not PG-13 or a G movie and not PG. Then you got to you gotta cut away because we know that's against the, the rating guidelines. You cannot see people kiss in movies. That's a joke, but... Uh, okay, so if we're going to add a marker on the timeline here, as opposed to on the actual clip, make sure that nothing is selected. So if something is selected, you can do Control Shift A, deselect, and you hit M for marker. And look at this, it's added a marker up here. Now we can simply double click on that, name it, kissy, wissy, and now we go down to comments and say, cut away before the actual kiss, because kissing's scary. There we go, hit okay. And now that information's added there. So look at this, we go down to this on the clip, double click on it, and it loads it into the source monitor. So the way to access the markers already in the timeline, if they are on the clip, you have to double click on the clip, it will load it in the source monitor, and then there's the marker right there. Double click on the marker, and it loads. So if you're working in the timeline, I really recommend adding the markers to the timeline and not to the clips. And if you're adding notes to the clips before the editor starts editing, then I would say, add your markers in the source monitor on the actual clips. But once the edit's been done, this is really good for adding notes for editors once the edit's been done, once a rough cut's been done. So now I'm going to double click on this right here, this marker, and it loads the name of the marker plus the notes for the editor. There's also a couple other convenient ways of using markers, which I'm going to explain here. One is actually for syncing time code in, in a multi-camera editing sequence, which uh, I will have a separate tutorial on that coming up here. But uh, right now I'm just gonna show another use for multi-camera markers here. Okay, I've got an MP3 here that I've imported. I'm gonna drag that into my timeline. Say we're going to be editing to this music track right here. I've got this kind of, let me, uh, I'm gonna clear this marker here. I'll right click on it and say, clear selected marker. And I'm going to show my waveforms here. Shift plus will increase my size of my timeline, of my, my track height there. And I'm gonna turn this down a little bit because I know it's kind of loud music. Now as we play through this, this is some music from incompetech.com here. Say we want to edit a montage that goes to the beat of this song here. This is kind of a cool little trick here that you can do. I'm going to grab my music and pull it over here a little bit just so I have a little gap, a little bit of pre-roll. And I'm going to get my finger on the M button ready to hit this. I'm going to first of all deselect Control shift a my clip, and I've got my finger on the M button and I'm going to get ready to hit this marker to the beat of this music. As I play, I'm hitting M as I hit the beat. I listen to the music and I hit M as it hits the beat. And there I'm just listening to the music. I'm just going tap, 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 just to the beat and uh, hitting those markers on the beat. So now if you're doing like a montage edit, you can use these markers here to edit to. So let's go to the beginning here, and I'm gonna throw, this is not really gonna make any sense here what I'm doing with this clip, but I'm gonna go into my timeline, hit an I, play, and actually I'm gonna go to my second marker here, and if you hold down shift while you're moving your playhead, it will, and your snap is turned on, like it is right here, I'm holding down shift, it will lock to the markers. See that, and I can actually make exact endpoints and outpoints on those markers. Hit O, I've got a video clip here, I'm going to turn off my audio on my source patching here and just turn on my video on my source patching here, turn the audio off so the video is just going to be delivered down here. So I'm going to put an endpoint where I want this clip to start up here, endpoint, and this is called three point editing. I've got an endpoint and outpoint in my timeline and an endpoint up here. So with my source patching turned off and I got my video assigned to this track right here, I hit period and it drops from this endpoint filling up this little portion right there. Let's grab another clip here, just a random clip. Just grab another clip here, just a random clip right here. Put an endpoint. I'm just grabbing random endpoints. I'm going to go to my timeline, put endpoint, drag this to the next marker, holding down shift, it locks right on that marker. Out point, drop that in. And I'm going to keep doing this, and we're going to have a little montage here. So if you're doing like a music video or something like that, and you want to edit to the beat, this is very helpful to do so. One more here, and then I will come back and show you a little montage I've got here. Okay, so I've created my little montage here. I've edited to the beat on these endpoints and outpoints that I created with the markers. And now I play. This doesn't really make any sense, but in a music video context, this would work pretty well. You can edit, add those markers to the beat and then you have these little edit points. And then when you're finished, you can right click and clear all your markers. And now you're left with the edit. 
So anyway, that's a pretty quick, simple explanation of markers and how they can be used in a couple practical uses for them. So if you have any questions, please post them and I will try to respond to you. Thank you.